Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Heather and on this channel we like to walk a very fine line between a shopping addicted makeup monster Okay, let's be real. I am a shopping addicted makeup monster, but I like to kind of dress up in the guise of having a very responsible makeup hobby. I really enjoy eyeshadow singles, dual chromes, multi chromes, blush, highlight, lip gloss, basically everything except pressed glitter. And today, grab a drink, grab a snack, get a pillow and a warm blankie because you're going to be here a while. May want to call out of work. I'm just saying. We're going to rank the 85 palettes that I tried this year. If that sounds like something you're interested in, stick with me. We're getting into it right now. So, I have before me 82 palettes that I tried this year. I actually purchased some more. I know, I know, it's abnormal. I kept those out of my list this year, and we're just going to be ranking the ones that I've tried enough to be able to provide my insight. Now the first couple I don't actually have in front of me, so I'm going to show you some pictures. The first is this little Spoiled Lips Cosmetics um, palette. It was a palette that I received in my Tribe Beauty Box, and you had a choice between this palette or another palette that was the same um, formula, the same brand, but a different color story. That color story was more neutral, this one was more like Pinky mauve -y. so I picked that one since I love Pinky mauve palettes. And this ended up being the absolute worst palette I tried this year. It was very patchy, the formula was very dry, the packaging was very bulky, and I felt like even though there was distinct differences between the shades in the actual pans, by the time you got it onto your eyes, there was no differences at all. Um, I do have a video trying out this palette, and you can see that in my Tribe Beauty Box unboxing, so I'll try to remember to link stuff. Gosh, only knows if I'll have time, but if not, just check out my channel and search for Tribe Beauty Box unboxings, and you'll see this one come up. This one is the Lorella Beauty um, Sweetheart Palette, and this palette was nice. It, it was just very okay. Again, another Try Beauty Box palette, and I felt like the formula was just very okay. The shimmers weren't that high impact. The mattes were fine. Um, the the texture was okay. I don't know if it had a lot of like longevity to it because I just never felt the urge to play with it a second time after I played with it in my video. The look came out okay, but again, it wasn't something that like drew me in or made me want to keep using it. So that's why I came to the very bottom of this list. And then the third palette at the very bottom is the Tribe um, Beauty Box palette that I got, um, the Be Bella palette. This one had beautiful packaging, roses all over it, very gorgeous. Um, and the color story was pretty, but there were several pressed glitters inside of it, which meant there was less colors that I was going to be able to use. The mattes were nice, but when I compare it to so many of the other palettes that I have, I just was not drawn to reuse it, so it went way to the bottom, so much so that I actually decluttered it. <laughs> so... Those are the three that I don't have. Everything else from here on forward I have. I'm watching on the bed that's in our guest room where I film. Everything is like precariously perched, so I'm just hoping and praying that we have no fatalities. <laughs> Say a prayer for me. <laughs> so the next palette to talk about is the Zoe Marie Cosmetics Dark Fantasy or Darkest Fantasy palette. This one I actually won in a giveaway on Instagram, which I was very surprised to win. Um, but this is what the palette looks like, and this is the actual color story. I think the color story is very pretty. I love these blues. This denim blue here is so, so pretty. I love this aqua. The other shimmers that they've included are very pretty, but you only have these, like, three, five mattes, um, and this one just doesn't seem to fit with everything else in this color story, and then you have one, two, three pressed glitters. We all know I don't really love pressed glitters, so I feel like the more I open this palette, the more I'm like... I don't want to use any of the pressed glitters, and then I just close the palette and go use something else. So, I don't know if it would be better for me to depot this and pull those other shades out, or be better for me to just pull these three pressed glitters out. I'm not sure, honestly, but I know for sure that it went to the bottom because of how many pressed glitters there were and how demotivating that was for me to try to use it. Next palette up is the Pinky Rose Obsessed palette, and I picked this up at like New Year's Eve last year. Um, they had a the the trilogy collection on sale, and it was I think almost half price. So I was like, yes, I gotta jump on this. I got free shipping. It was fantastic. So I picked up the trilogy because I was interested in the other two palettes, and this one I was like, I basically get it for free. It's cheaper for me to buy all three together than it was for me to buy those other two individual palettes because. 
of the way that their sale was running, but whatever. So I picked this one up. I do really like these kind of teal and blue shades here and this kind of minty aqua shade here, but all this like warm tone neutral, I just, I'm kind of like, meh, I don't know. So I already knew going into it that this was probably going to be my least favorite palette out of the three, and that's okay, um, again, because it was cheaper for me to buy it this way, but I think that's why this one floated so far down to the bottom. Coming in at number 80, are we at 80? Yes. So number 80 is the Wet n Wild Color Icons Lights Out palette, and this is this little 10 pan palette here. I was really, I picked this up around the time that Melt launched their Mary Jane palette, and the reason I picked it up is because I wanted some of these like grungy neutral shades. I had picked up some shimmers from Give Me Glow that were very like metallic kind of smoky grungy shimmers to sort of replace the vibe of that palette and I wanted some mattes to go with it so I found this one at Walgreens I think it was like four or five dollars and I had a coupon and some points and everything so I ended up paying about 15 cents for this palette which I think is a fair price <laughs> the shimmers in this palette are just very 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 okay do not buy this for the shimmers the mattes work just fine I wish this green pulled a little bit more green on the eyes. When you put this one onto your lids, it just looks gray. It doesn't give you any of that green punch, which I really wish that it did, because I think that would add a lot of more depth to this palette. Um, but I do think the mattes blend nicely. I like this very cool tone shade here. There's another palette that I have that has similar shades in it that made it a lot higher. Um, so you'll see if you're kind of thinking this, but you maybe want something that's gonna be a little bit better quality, stick with me, because I got something better for you. Next one, so this is 79. This is the Morphe 35C palette and when this came out I was like wow this is breathtaking because it's all the like mauve pinky purpley shades that I love and it is but it's also Morphe formula. Now I ended up decluttering the uh, Revolution and Emily Noel Wants palette because there was a shade, this kind of like spooky lilac y shade in that palette that I really liked. But when I swatched it compared to this one, I actually liked this one so much more. And you do get some color payoff, but again, it's a Morphe palette, so you know, it, it, there's only so high that it can go. I do really like this kind of red shimmer infused black metallic here, but I do have a pressed glitter. I've got a lot of shades that are really, really light that aren't going to look significantly different on my eyes, and it's an enormous palette. I don't tend to gravitate towards enormous palettes so for me that's why this one ranked so much lower. The next one up to talk about this is the Glam Light Pie palette and I keep it in the little box because I think it looks adorable in there but this is what this one looks like it's got this kind of like glittery finish but it's underneath the rest of it and you don't get any like fallout from that glitter which I think is awesome and then you open it up and you've got this cute little palette. And I think the reason why this goes so low for me is because the mattes, like, you just have a handful of mattes and a handful of shimmers. I know it's a very small palette, concise. I appreciate that. But I feel like some of these shades start to look the same. Like, when you put these two shades on your eye, they look very similar, believe it or not. When you put these two shades on your eye, they look very similar. So I don't really have... I feel like they could have gone with more depth, more variation in the colors than what they have here, and that kind of disappointed me. I think they were trying to stick very true to, like, what does sweet potato pie or apple pie look like, you know, and, and really bring those colors to life rather than, you know, pushing the color boundary just a little bit and naming the shades in sort of an homage style rather than, like, a realistic style. Number 77 is the Nomads America's Parks palette. It looks like this. This is after they did their sort of pivot in what their um, palettes were going to be themed around to be more like general destinations rather than specific countries or cities. Um, which, you know, I like the way that they're doing their new palettes. I think they're very interesting color stories. But I'm kind of sad that they had to change their entire brand because of negative feedback on one palette whenever I see tons of other brands doing similar things with their palettes and they get no feedback. So, I don't know, it kind of seems mean to bully like the any brand, but whatever. So, this is the America's Parks palette, and the reason why I love this palette so much, this gold with the pink in it, this kind of bronze with purple in it, like you can see it reflecting in my camera. I think those are so pretty. You've got this really pretty kind of denim blue here. All of the metallics in this palette have sort of an interesting twist on them, which I think is awesome. And especially if you're going to, to um, 
sort of reminisce on nature there's so many things in nature that have these kind of unusual colors in it so I'm glad they didn't just stick with like a pure brown palette because they very easily could have um, I think this is definitely much more representative of you know parks in general so I was really happy to pick this one up but again it's predominantly warm tones so that's why I think it slid towards the bottom for me palette to talk about is the C'est La Vie palette from Makeup Maniacs Cosmetics and it looks like this. When you open it up it has this really pretty color story. Now when I was ranking my palettes for this particular video I basically compared every single palette to all the other palettes to decide like if I had the choice to use either one of these palettes in the morning to get ready for you know my day which one would I pick and I whittled it down that way to put these in an order because otherwise it's very hard to compare like a 30 pan pink palette to a 6 pan blue palette you know what I mean it's it's very challenging um, and I think this one fell lower because it is predominantly a matte color story I don't tend to do all matte color like looks I love shimmer I love like different glittery type finishes but not pressed glitters um, and so this one fell down a little bit because of that. I think you have like three shades here that are virtually identical. So there's a little bit of overlap that I don't think was necessary. And you only have one shimmer here, which is the shade Royal. And while it is a pretty shimmer, it's not like a full-on metallic. It's just, I would almost describe it as a satin at this point. And I think it's because there are so many stunning colors that I have in my collection that just like a regular metallic feels like a satin to me now. Does that make sense? Like I'm just biased, prejudiced, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but that's why I think this one fell down really low. This midnight shade is a stunning navy blue. I absolutely love it. It started me on this like whole quest for navy blue eyeshadows. So I do like the quality of this palette, but I think because it's predominantly mattes, that's why it falls so low. The next palette to talk about is the Nabla Secret palette, and it looks like this. And here's your color story. So I picked this one up literally because of this shade here. Now originally this is $34 and I could not rationalize the purchase of a $34 palette for one shade but it went on sale half off at Ulta for $17 and I had some points so I ended up getting it very very cheap um, and I felt like that was more worthwhile. I do really like this green and this kind of like navy blue shade like it's really it's got these really interesting sparkles in it that are just different colors. It kind of reminds me of Dreamy too that one shade um, and I do like kind of this soft kind of rosy pink shades here at the top the golds at the bottom don't really do it for me but again I'm not that like warm toned neutral person anymore I used to be um, but I just I'm not down for that anymore so for me that part of it is like not really grabbing me but the rest of this color story is very pretty and I do really like it so I like it but there are things about the color story I would change I would definitely make it smaller so it floated down towards the bottom for that reason. Now, shockingly, I did end up picking up this Nabla Cutie Palette, which is the analog palette. This came in a Tribe Beauty box, which I picked up because I really wanted the blue palette, the midnight blue palette. And you'll see that one further along in the, uh, the show here. But this is what this palette looks like. Now, I know this looks like just a warm tone neutrals palette, and it definitely is, but I think this shade is really special because it's this, like, electric orange to gold duochrome. Like, you just get a lot of, like, light reflection off this shade. Um, and then you've got some more boring shades here. I really love, this is one of their, like, latex mattes, which are supposed to be, I would say, kind of like the cream to powder formula from Natasha Denona. Very, very pretty in the outer outer V. I used this on a weekend that I was traveling with my husband and I really loved the looks that I put together with it even though they were neutral palettes but when I think about do I want to use a neutral palette or do I want to use something that's a little bit more colorful I tend not to lean towards neutrals which is why this one went down so far to the bottom but if you are somebody that really likes neutrals I would highly recommend considering this palette if you like Nabla's formula if you like kind of smaller color stories because the quality on this one is amazing. Next one to talk about is the W7 Enchanted palette, and this is actually the dupe palette for the Nabla Soul Blooming palette. As you can see, Nabla played like a big role in my uh, palette experimentation this year, and this is what this palette looks like. I really loved these like soft pinky shades. I loved this kind of like kind of lavender periwinkle blue shade, the navy here. You've got this really nice pop of pink. You've got this kind of buttery. Um, duochrome type shade here. I think they did a really good job trying to mimic the actual Soul Blooming palette. Um, it does have good staying power, but I think the shimmers, the way that they reflect, is not the same 
like transitions as what the original Soul Blooming has. So that's why I ranked this one lower. And now that I have Soul Blooming, the original palette, I'm not sure that this one will stick in my collection because I don't need the dupe of a palette I already own. So since I was able to get my hands on that this year, um, I may let this one go at some point. But I do think it's a good dupe if you don't have that palette or you're not willing to get it, you know, from like a secondhand place because it's discontinued at this point. Or you don't want to pay the exorbitant prices for like the, you know, new on the secondhand market kind of thing. This is a great alternative if you're just kind of looking to dupe that vibe. Next up, this is the ColourPop Sorbet Quad and it looks like this. I picked this up actually because I was getting ready to to um, help with my stepsister's wedding and I needed really quick makeup for the day of and I don't tend to have like small quick palettes like this. I tend to buy, you know, enormous big palettes and when I realized I was going to need something very fast. I was at Ulta. I needed to pick up a sponge because I also brought foundation with no foundation brush. So I was like killing the game that day. Um, but I picked this one up. It was only $10 and I do really like it. I think it's a really pretty color story. I think the shimmers like look really nice in this one. I just, I don't tend to reach for something so small on a normal basis. Normally I want something that's like a bigger color story more colors to choose from so it falls towards the bottom because of how small it is and next up this is the fatal beauty frankenslay palette i have this one and i think the the oh my gosh the packaging on the front of this is so cute that's half of what sold me on this palette and this is what the color story looks like you've got five mattes and one pressed glitter now when i spoke to the brand owner she said this is actually an eye safe pressed glitter and i so i did use this one once and i thought it made a really pretty eye look um trixie cosmetics also does eye safe pressed glitters I think it has to do with the particle size. You know, some of these glitters have like really, really big chunks in them. And this is a very small, fine glitter. So I think the mattes in here are really pretty. I don't know if they're private label or not. They have kind of that same texture as some other private label stuff that I've tried. But if you're a fan of like Morphe mattes, then you'll like these mattes just as fine. Um, this palette, this color story was very pretty. I loved the pop of the neon green in here. But again, it's a smaller palette. I tend to gravitate towards, my sweet spot is probably about 9 to 18 shades. Um, so anything smaller or larger tends to kind of fall towards the bottom because of that. But that's that's the Frankenslay palette. Very cute. The next one to talk about is the Ooh La La palette from Colourpop, which looks like this. I did pick this one up during one of the sales. I have one shade that's very busted that fell out, so I will hold this very gently. But I do think that the color story is very pretty. I love the pop of the very intense pink here. I love that you kind of lean more purple like mauve. And then you've got more of like a burgundy red here to really give depth to the look. Because otherwise you just don't have any depth in these kind of looks. And then you have this super shock here. I'm sure my super shock is going to dry out because it's like half eroded already. But I do think that's a pretty palette. But again, it's not one that I reach to 100% of the time. Which is why it ranks so much lower. Alright. Let's go get some more pack. Coming in at number 69. <laughs> okay, that's actually kind of funny because it's the love palette from Natasha Denona. So if you're a six-year-old boy like me, you'll think that's funny. Um, but that's what this color story looks like. This was actually a Valentine's gift from my husband, which I was so grateful to get. Um, I do think this color story is really pretty. I love this kind of like blind, purpley shade, dream, commitment, trust. This part of the color story really speaks to me the most. I sometimes struggle with this side because it's very warm toned, very like peachy pink. Um, and sometimes I just don't feel like doing that. So for me, some of this gets a little bit lost in the sauce, but I do think it's a really pretty palette. I love the Natasha Denona's formula and her quality. So I definitely will hang on to this one. Um, but that's why it ranked a little bit lower is because sometimes the color story trips me up a little bit. All right, 68 is the ColourPop Fade Into Hue palette. And again, this one falls towards the bottom. Number one, because it has so many shades. Number two, because it has multiple pressed glitters in it. Um, and number three, it's a rainbow palette at the end of the day. I picked this up on a very good sale because of these purples. I don't have a lot of these like cool toned purples in my collection in different depths. I feel like a lot of times when you get purple palettes, they end up being very like fuchsia burgundy type purples and not like grapey purples. So I was really excited to get that. I do really like some of these really light shades. I 
think they are very pretty. I love the inclusion of these pink shades, this really pretty highlight shade. Um, so I definitely think it has a purpose, but as a standalone palette, it floats towards the bottom because I bought this more with the idea of using it as a companion piece rather than like its own individual item. The next one to talk about is the Profusion Euphoria palette. Now this is one of their 10 pan palettes. I have a ton of these palettes and if you'd like to see me rank them, definitely let me know in a comment because I think they're, that would be a worthwhile video to do. But this is what this palette looks like. You've got this really pretty kind of blue-purple duochrome. You've got these really pretty metallics. You've got a matte with some shimmer in it the blues, and then you can tie in with the grays. This is such a fun color story. Every time I use this palette, I feel very inspired. I feel very excited. I love this black. I think it is so, so pretty, especially when you combine it with this kind of like taupey silver. These like almost lavender taupey silvers are like my jam right now. I almost bought another one from um, Davina during Black Friday. I don't know why. I already have like four, but I just needed them. So I really like this palette. Mine looks like it was all beat to hell because Walmart delivered it to me this way and instead of giving me a new one like I asked, they refunded my purchase price and then refused to uh, make it right. So that was cool. But if you can find this one, whether it's at Walmart or Profusion directly, I would highly recommend it because I do think it's a really good quality. Then the next one to talk about, I think this is the first collab palette that's coming all the way to the bottom. Um, and this is the Shine, no, Shine. Sydney Grace and Tim Talia collab. This is the Radiant Reflection palette. And this one comes down to the bottom simply because it's like a rainbow color story. Of the three of them, it was the one that I was the least excited about. I do really like the inclusion of some of these different shimmer formulas. I think that's really nice. And I love that they did lighter and deeper color stories. I think I got the deeper for this one, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it says anywhere on my packaging, but that's whatever. Um, I, I mean, they're pretty colors, but I just feel like I have a lot of them in my collection already, so this one is the least inspiring to me out of all three of the palettes. I do own all three, so you'll see the other two coming up in a while. <laughs> then we have the BH Mimosa palette. I took this on a girl's trip and had an absolute blast with this palette. I think it is such a fun, bright, colorful color story. Um, this champagne shade right here is like this iridescent orangey kind of shade and it is so pretty all over the lids it just makes everything pop so beautifully I do agree that there's not enough depth in this so you get kind of like bright mid-tone kind of eye looks but you don't get anything with depth so for me it kind of slides to the bottom more because there is a lack of completeness in this palette but I do think the shades that you get are very pretty and I did really enjoy using it so it's a good one and then I'll talk about the Mean Girls and Profusion palette. So I ended up picking this one up and then shortly thereafter, the Storybook Cosmetics Mean Girls palette, which I have sitting over here in my to use pile. This one then went on sale. So now I have both. I definitely don't need both, but um, I picked this one up so that I could get the cool mirror and everything too. And I do, let me see if I can hold this without blinding everybody. I like the color story a lot. It actually reminds me of the Fade Into Hue, but like with deeper tones because you have some really pretty like grungy kind of darker shades to balance everything out. Um, there are some pressed glitters in here. There's these two, this one, and this one, which really sucks because that's most of the shimmers and part of why this one falls so low in the ranking for me. But these two shades here, this lemon, I'm sorry, Lesbian Crush, is such a beautiful like iridescent -y lemon yellow color and it looks so pretty all over the lids. You do have some other shimmers in here, but they're just not as vibrant as these two. These two have sort of a super shock quality to them. Um, but the reason this falls lower, one, it's so much bigger, and two, it's got so many pressed glitters. I just can't put it up any higher. But I do really love the mattes, and I think this palette, combined with some of my topper palettes, which you'll see coming up later, would make a great combination. The next one from the Pinky Rose Trio is the 80s Baby palette. And this one I put a little bit higher because I love the cool tone purples and blues in here. These shades here make such a beautiful color story. Like, I don't even need this side of the palette. This side is so pretty on its own, but I do like the inclusion of that really pretty teal. I did do a look combining the other palette, the Obsessed palette, some of the orange and yellows with this blue on the lower lash line, and it looked so pretty. I really liked how that look came out, um, but I think even this, this palette by itself definitely inspires me a lot more than that other one, which is why it's really cute. The next palette to talk about is the Ace Beauté Paradise Fallen. This is the old formula. They just relaunched everything with a new formula, but um, I don't know if I'm really willing to go there yet. So this is the older formula. I did do a couple of looks with this, and I do like the formula, 
but I wish it were softer. I feel like it's so hard pressed that the mattes, like, they take a while to blend nicely, and then the shimmers just, they don't give you that, like, super metallic look. They just give you, like, a soft wash of color. So I hope that in the new formula they make things a little bit different, but originally this is, like, a $35 palette. I would have been furious to pay $35 for this palette. Um, I think I picked it up for $17 shipped. It was unused, but on, like, Mercari or Poshmark or something like that. I think it was Poshmark. Um, and so that $17 price point I was a little bit more comfortable with, but $34 for this, oh, I would have been mad. No, 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 no. This is the Makeup Revolution Black Pearl palette. It looks like one of these little melted candy bar palettes. Um, but this is what this one looks like. It definitely has that, like, Play-Doh-y smell to it, which I'm not a huge fan of. But this sort of lilac metallic shade I do really like. And these mattes play so nicely together to make like a beautiful, beautiful eye look. This silver is actually really impactful. Um, so you can see it's like nice and vibrant. So I do really like the fact that this makes beautiful, beautiful looks. I definitely use this more as a companion palette to other things because I think whenever I use these shimmers, it's not enough for me. Similar to the the other palettes that I've been speaking about where the shimmers almost feel like satins because I'm so used to these like ultra metallic metallics. But now that I have some of the metallics, where did I put that palette? I picked up some of the ultra metals from Terra Moon and I think this palette with those metal... Oh, it looks so pretty. So I'm really excited to do that with this palette, but I do think if you're looking for some staple cool tone neutrals at an affordable price, this is the palette that I would recommend for you. Coming in at number 60 is the Makeup by Mario Glam Quad, and it looks like this. It's sort of this like blue color story, and then you have this kind of olive burnished gold shade. I think these colors are really pretty, but again, it's a quad, so despite the fact that I think this is a nice formula, I tend not to use this by itself. I want to bring in other things to kind of round out a look. I've only got one matte in here, so I do like the formula a lot. I think it's a really nice palette. I got it, I think, for about 10 bucks because it was on sale, and then I got the 20% off from Sephora, so I think that's a much more reasonable price for these. I know he released some new ones, but they're all neutrals, so I'm kind of like who cares, but this one's really nice. It's just because it's so small and more limiting that it's falling lower in the ranking. The next one to talk about is the Huda Beauty Nude Light Palette. So this is a set of three that she released. I have the Nude Light and the Nude Rich, and I like this one a lot for the shimmers that are in it, especially this one and this one. Those two shades are so, so pretty. Like, if you just look, I mean... This one is kind of that like pink to greeny gold duochrome and this one has more of like a lilac-y twist to it. I think they are so pretty on the eyes. They give a lot of like sparkle and shine, which I love. Um, but the mattes in here are all very, very light. I would count this one as more of like a transition shade for me or maybe like slightly deeper than my skin tone by the time you wash it out on the lids. So for me, the rest of these mattes really don't do it enough for me. And that's why it's ranking lower but I think the quality is lovely and if you're looking for some toppers this one is a really pretty formula this is the copacetic quad and this is the year of the ox so this was released as the January palette this past year um, these two shades are kind of those like flaky type shades that they launch and you need really like a strong glitter glue to kind of blend those out onto the lid they do make a lot of texture but they have a lot of shine they're like a mica flake and they're eye safe which I think is great um, and then you have one really nice metallic and one really nice matte. Again, I think this is great quality. I'm going to close this so I don't dump it out onto the floor because it is a drier formula. It's very easy to break. Um, I do think this is a great formula, great quality, but because it's a quad, it's so limiting to try to use it by itself. I'm definitely more drawn to bigger palettes, so a lot of my quads and smaller palettes fell lower in the ranking because of that. The next one to talk about is the Peachy Queen Tiffany's palette, and it looks like this. It's a very pretty color story. As soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, I'm going to need to have that. And I waited for it to go on sale. It went on sale for like 30, 40% off, something like that. So I picked it up then. And I do think it's very pretty. The mattes are actually a very soft, like buttery smooth type matte. And the shimmers are nice, but they're not, I mean, they're soft. They, well, they're softer than I remember. Um, and they are like nice and metallic, but they're just not like that ultra foily metallic that I always am craving. Um, and this is a cheaper brand, so I understand. Um, and I think, you know, the gift box and classy shades were a bit redundant. I don't think you necessarily needed both. Or if you wanted to keep both, I would have taken the 1837 shade. I would have 
kept it out and I would have put a deeper teal matte because I think what you're missing in here is a teal matte to really round out this palette to make it a little bit more um, workable, user friendly. So I like the looks that I've come up with with this one, but I just feel like, again, it's a palette that needs other palettes to really make a cohesive look the way I would use the palette, and that's why I ranked lower. Morphe and Cherry Coke. So when this launched, I was like, yes, I'm going to buy it. And then I saw it in person and I was like, hmm, maybe I can wait on it. Like, I probably don't need it, need it, which like, do I need any eyeshadows at this point? We all know the answer is no. Um, but every time I would go into the store, I would walk past the shade, I would swatch it, I would see how pretty it looks, and then I would just be like, no, no. And then Ulta did their like 10 times points on palette purchases and I bought like 12 palettes that day. <laughs> And this was one of them because I had been thinking about it for so long. I was really drawn in by these reds. I loved that there was like some deeper mattes here. So I decided to get it and I actually do really like the looks. I mean, every look you're going to have is like a pinky red kind of burgundy look and that's to be expected. But I'm a huge Coca-Cola fan. I love Cherry Coke Zero. That's one of my favorites. Um, so for me, I, like the nostalgia got me, the collab got me. I almost picked up the entire collection to be perfectly honest, but I ended up walking away from the rest of it. The only thing I don't love is again, and the shade names are only on the little sticker thing inside. I hate that. That drives me nuts. Number 55 is the ABH Norvina Volume 2. I picked this up on Super Sale from Ulta. I think it was discounted to like $30 and then I had $15 in points so I got it for $15 um, shipped which was an awesome price for this palette. They're originally $60. Bucks. Um, I like this palette a lot. I love this kind of like chartreuse yellow. I think that's really pretty. I love these deeper blues here. I love all the dark mattes that you get in here. You've got some really interesting like green blue type shimmers here and you've got this like yellowy purple shimmer here that comes almost like a gray. I think these look so so pretty. Um, the reason it falls lower for me, number one, this stains. <laughs> this stains a lot. And number two, it's an enormous palette. So when I think about getting a palette out to do something in the morning, I don't often think about getting out one of my really big palettes. And then the shimmers for these, again, they're kind of that like metallic, like soft metallic type uh, finish. So I find myself being um, drawn to the idea of getting other palettes out to try to finish out a look and make it look a little bit more vibrant. Um, and I don't always want to do that in the morning. So this one fell a little bit lower on the list because of that. The same thing could be said for the Glam Light Ice Cream Dream Palette. I picked this up when it was like 35% off because I had been eyeing it for ages. And I'm really happy that I did. I love this pastel palette. It's definitely very vibrant. I love the Glam Light Shimmer Formula. Like, these are like stupid good. Um, as you can see there, they're like so pretty so vibrant I'm just swatching things out on my leg at this point and loving it um, I really like this I feel like the mattes they kind of are like either just pastel or you have these like really bright mattes there's not a lot in between um, except for this shade which is kind of a transitioning shade so again I feel myself not always being able to make a complete cohesive look with this one and having to dip into something else the size that's part of why it ranked lower so the next palette is the Wet n Wild Spongebob Nautical Nonsense palette. I could give two flying Fs about Spongebob. I never watched it as a kid. I really didn't care about it at all. But this palette really spoke to me in terms of the color story, believe it or not. Um, yes, you've got some warm tone neutrals, but I loved this like chartreuse olive green. I loved this really dark, dark metallic green. These two sparkly shades, although they feel like a pressed glitter, are not listed as a pressed glitter. Um, and so that got me really excited to be able to try to use them. And they are very pretty on the lids. And then this shade is like pure light coming from your lids. It's so, so pretty on the lids. I love these two blues and the navy. They did a really good job with this palette. And I don't know if it's because it was a collab or if they had somebody new involved in the whole process, but this palette actually shocked me. I did an entire week of looks with this palette and I took it on a trip. Like, I took a wet and wild SpongeBob palette on a trip. Shocking. But it was a really, really enjoyable palette to use. So all in all, I really liked that one. Because I've been getting so much other new stuff though, it has floated more towards the bottom, but I do still think the color story is very pretty, and when I open the palette up again, I'm like re-inspired to use it again, so good job to you, Wet n Wild. Now this one, 
This one I have kind of a love-hate relationship with, and this is the Lunar Beauty Moon Spell Volume 2. I cannot possibly be the only person that is bothered by the fact that this palette is not the same size as Volume 1. Like, does that bother anyone else? It bothers me to no end. Because the first one fits perfectly in my drawers, and this one doesn't. And that makes me so frustrated that I can't store them together. I hate that. So this is the color story for this palette, and I do think it's pretty. I love these three shades up here. This one in particular, it's like this pinky fuchsia, but it has this like green and gold glitter in it that just gives it this just extra dimension and sparkle. I think it looks so, so pretty. I do love the matte black. I love these kind of deeper shades here. The reds are very pretty. This orange, I was definitely hoping that it would be more of like a vibrant orange, and it's not. Um, the other metallics, though, I think they're not the same. They're not the same as the old formula and that really upsets me and makes me feel sad because I love this brand and I love pretty much everything they've released with the exception of that face palette it looks ridiculous. But um, this, like, I'm excited to have it and I will use it but when I think about some of my other palettes, like, I gravitate to them more because I know the quality of this one is going to make me work harder for the same kind of look. Did you guys get a snack? I told you you should have. <laughs> Pause here. Go get a snack and come back. I can wait. <laughs> Alright, so the next one to talk about is the ColourPop Cabana Club. I picked this one up half price at Ulta one day when I was shopping with my aunt, and we are super shopping enablers of each other. I really like the color story of this one. This pop of blue against the pink and this navy is so pretty to me. I love this like champagne and gold shade. The yellow shade is really pretty. I actually do really like the neutrals in this palette too and this kind of like rosy gold to pink, like that duochrome pink to gold can get me anytime. So I was really happy to pick this one up. Did I need it? Absolutely not. Um, but I'm really happy that I got it and it's definitely been a fun one to play with. So this is number 50. This is the BH Cotton Candy palette. I picked up most of these palettes last year, but Cotton Candy and the Sugar Cone I did not pick up. And I definitely regretted it. So then I was like on the hunt for the Cotton Candy palette, which I ended up finding unused on Mercari for the same price as the original. So I went ahead and picked it up. I do really think this is pretty. I love this metallic kind of ghosty blue purple type shade and I love these two pink fuchsia type shades. The mattes in here, this sugar plum one is very unique, the other ones not so much. I do think it's pretty but because it's not as special as the other palettes in the same series it fell lower on the list for me. So this is the Juvia's Place Blushed Rose palette and I picked this up because I thought the orange shade in the top center here was really pretty. It's like an orange to gold duochrome. I was really feeling the um, indie brand orange shades that I hadn't picked up yet, which I did pick up finally during Black Friday, but I was like, maybe this can be my replacement until then. The looks that I do with this are very pretty. I kind of wish that this wasn't so, like, warm brown, and I wish it was a little bit more, like, dark pink burgundy. So this one kind of feels, like, out of place for me, but I do think the color story is very pretty. Again, because it's a smaller palette, I'm not as motivated to pick it up as some of the bigger palettes, which is why I kind of floated towards the bottom. Same thing can be said for the Juvia's Place I Live I Love Ice Palette. Now, I think the name of that is so stupid. It's like the live, laugh, love stuff. I don't really care about that. But I do think the color story is pretty. Again, it falls towards the bottom because of a couple of reasons. One, there's a press glitter, which we all know I'm not going to use by this point. If you've made it this far, you know full well I'm not going to use press glitter. Two, these two mattes, this one doesn't really show up on my skin at all, and this one like kind of barely shows up. It, it gives a good amount of blue, but I feel like I need something deeper to really offset it. Now, they just released the Allure 2 palette, which is like a dark blue palette, so I think that one paired with this one is going to be phenomenal. I can't wait to get that palette in. Um, I do think the shimmers are very pretty. They definitely start to kind of look a little bit similar, though, because this one has like a marbled kind of gray-blue this one is definitely kind of like a cool tone blue, so they do kind of, like, here they look a little bit more different, but, I don't know, on the eyes, I feel like, did you maybe need all three of those? I'm not sure. But anyway, I think the palette is pretty. I have done a couple of looks with it that I've really, really enjoyed, so, um, it falls lower because of the mattes not being, you know, equally able to be used, and because of the press glitter. I just don't care about press glitters. Next up to talk about is the ColourPop and Hello Killy. Killy. 
Kitty palette. Um, this is like this cute little four pan that was released earlier this year and I got it really because I wanted these like really summery bold yellow shades. For some reason they've really just been like catching my eye recently. Again this one does a very like light to mid-tone look and it's a much smaller palette so it's very limiting on what you can do with this palette so it falls lower for that but I do think it's a really great quality and if you just want a couple pops of yellow for your collection if you can find this one on sale I would definitely pick it up. Next up is the Odin's Eye Mini Forest Palette. This is the Alva 2 Mini Forest Palette. This collection released earlier this year, and I got this one in a mystery box. Um, I was really excited to get this because I think this kind of minty aqua shade and this really pretty blue looked so nice together. Odin's Eye has one of my favorite shimmer formulas, um, and so getting this palette got me really excited. I love this olivey green shade. The browns I could kind of take or leave, but the greens and the blues in here are really, really pretty. Again, because it's smaller and because some of the shades I won't use as much, that's why this ranked a little bit lower, but the quality on this is phenomenal. If this is like 100% your color story, you will not be disappointed. Next one to talk about is the Trixie Cosmetics Plant Gay Palette. This is such a cute little palette. I love the outside packaging, which is why I keep it. The inside packaging is definitely a lot like louder, so... Um, I like the outside. I think it's really cool, so I keep that. This is what the inside looks like. I love everything except for these two shades. The whole rest of this palette is phenomenal. These mattes blend so beautifully. This metallic is so pretty. This metallic is very pretty as well. These two shades are a biodegradable glitter, and I just do not like them. They have this very gritty kind of texture to them, and they're supposed to be eye safe, but like... Meh. They're very meh to me. And when I put them on the lid, I'm kind of just like, what did I just do? Like, why did I do that? They're patchy, they're dry, they're gritty. It's like rubbing sand on your eyes. So I don't like those two shades. I kind of hope they stop doing them. But the rest of the palette is very, very nice. So now we're getting into some of the like topper palettes and they definitely ranked lower because they are solely topper palettes. I can't imagine using them by themselves as like a regular palette so that made it hard for them to rank any higher. This first one is the Essence Never Give Up on Your Daydream palette. This one I found at like TJ Maxx or Marshall something like that and I picked it up because of this really beautiful creamy orange shade here called Whipped. It really drew, drew me in and then I love that you have a couple different like cool tone blues here. You've got this more cool tone blue purple duochrome. You've got kind of that typical like gold iridescent duochrome there and then you've got a really nice mint shade here. I think this is a really pretty palette. It works great for under the brow bone, the inner corner. If you use these type of duochrome highlighters, this is a really great one. And you get an enormous amount of product for the price. I think this whole palette originally was only $10 and I paid like $4.99. So I was so, so happy to find this. My aunt actually found one in her like hometown too, which was awesome because otherwise I was gonna have to go back and get one for her. <laughs> And then the next one to talk about is the It's Bell Break the Rules palette. This one, again, is a palette full of topper shades. I do think these are really pretty. They've got really pretty, like, light reflection on the lids. This Your Choice is probably my favorite. It has such a beautiful, like, bright, intense blue reflect. And then I do really like these two shades here as well. These two are more of just, like, a straight-up metallic rather than, like, a duochrome, so they aren't as exciting to me, so I tend to skip over them. But the rest of them are really, really pretty. I do have the second iteration of that palette, which is the flare palette but I haven't gotten a chance to use this one as much so I can't really speak to it. I do think the color story is very pretty. I love all the blues and greens and purpley kind of shades in here. Like this whole bottom part is like definitely calling my name. This citrine shade is actually pretty cute too um, but I haven't used this one enough to be able to render a full like opinion on the quality of it so that's why it's not in this video. Next up is the Odin's Eye Alva 2 palette, and it looks like this. I love the Odin's Eye packaging. They do so much with their packaging. It's like the only brand that like I understand the expensive packaging. <laughs> this one ranked a little lower, though, because there's two pressed glitters. I'm so tired of pressed glitters. I think Odin's Eye has made it clear that this is the last palette that's going to have pressed glitters, um, so I'm very happy about that. I think the rest of the palette is very pretty. I love this very like soft bluey shade here, and this beautiful like metallic blue here is so pretty. I bet that would look good with the I Live I Love palette from Juvia's. Those would look really nice together. So 
I really like using this one. I love the finish of their, like, the textures of their shadows and the way that those come off. The only thing I don't love about this one is the press glitters, which is why it ranks lower. And then one of my other mega palettes, this is the NYX Ultimate Utopia palette. Now, I love this palette. Um, my husband picked this up for me, I forget if it was Valentine's Day or anniversary or something like that. Um, and we were traveling and he was like, just go to Ulta and, you know, spend some money. And I was like, okay. <laughs> So I ended up picking up this palette and I had been wanting it for a while, but I didn't pick it up because it was so big and I was like, ah, you, you never use big palettes, but this one is so pretty. You've got these really delicious cool tones here. You've got this really nice silver and then you've got some stuff that kind of pools a little bit warmer while still being very grungy. This metallic like oaky copper shade is so pretty and this kind of like grungy mossy green is beautiful all over the lids. These four metallics tend to be like very textured very light reflecting on the lids which I think is really cool I think you've got a really good gradation of color here and I have enjoyed every single look that I've done with this palette so definitely would recommend that one if you're thinking about it the only reason it ranks lower is because it's so big <laughs> like it's so big I almost wish it was like two smaller palettes that like separated or something because I feel like I don't need this entire palette all the time this is the Rebel Rouge Labs Gods and Monsters palette. I love how they do different art for both covers. Like, I think that is so cool. I don't know if any other palettes or brands that do that. But this is what this palette looks like. I think I picked this one up because I was really interested in the Dominique Cosmetics. What was that palette called? Was it Lemonade? I don't know, it was, oh, Rustic Glam. It was like a blue cover, and then it had this really pretty, like, blue and pink put together in the palette, and I was like, yes, I need that palette. But every time I looked at the palette, I felt kind of stifled of, like, what would I actually do with the palette if I bought it? And that's not a great reason to buy a palette. So I ultimately decided not to get it, and then I came across this palette, and I was like, ooh, this is pretty, too. And I ended up buying this one, because it went on sale, and I was feeling a little impulsive. Um, but I picked this one up, and... I still find myself kind of struggling with the color story in terms of like coming up with looks, but the looks that I do make when I use this palette, I really, really like. So I think if I just put a little bit more effort into it, I would continue to find other looks that I like out of this one, but it ranks lower for me because my mind doesn't immediately think of looks to do when I open the, the palette up. The next one to talk about is the Melt She's in Parties palette. Ooh, this matches my background like perfectly. Oof. Um, but this is the She's in Parties palette. It's a really, really cute little kind of cool tone purpley color story. These are like colors right up my alley. I saw Angelica Neefus do her video on this palette and I was like, yep, I'm going to need that one. So I went ahead and picked it up and I was really happy with the, uh, the purchase. The only shade that's like just very okay is this one here. And it's just because it's like this gold to pink like kind of iridescent shade. And it does have color payoff. It is like a nice soft shade, but it's very muted the effect of that shade so for me it just kind of was like meh but this metallic and this metallic more than make up for it those two are so pretty together the next one to talk about there's a lot of Odin's Eye in this collection too this is the Odin's Eye and Judy um, collab called Red Dragon you'll see one of the other palettes in this um, ranking but one of them which was the Hummingbird palette I haven't gotten a chance to try yet so I can't really speak to the quality of that one yet but this is the Odin's Eye and Judy palette, and I originally was not even going to pick this one up, but then I started watching more and more videos, especially videos that utilize this kind of pukey green shade and this, like, metallic, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to need that one, so I did end up getting it. Um, I love how dark the mattes go here. I love that you have this really bright pop of red. I think that really does balance this out nicely, and the shades that they used for their... Um, shimmers are so nice and again the textures from Odin's Eye are awesome so that's why this one ranked higher even though it's a neutral palette and I don't tend to opt for neutral palettes the textures and the finishes of those like duochrome multi-chrome kind of shades really helped elevate this palette in my mind this is the Nomad Land of Elds and East which is Ice and Fire I think in I don't know what language. Icelandic? Is that a language? I know this is their Iceland palette, so I'm going to leave it at that and quit while I'm behind. <laughs> but that's what this palette looks like. 
This is another palette that when I got it, I was so excited about it because I think the color story is really pretty. But there are parts of me that really struggle with coming up with a, with a cohesive eye look for this one. So again, it's one where I think I just need to put more effort into it. I really love that they included these kind of mossy, purpley, um, and green shades here. I love that you have these vibrant pops here. This red is so, so pretty. I really like this red shade. Um, and then you've got a lot of blues. Blues have been like my new favorite eyeshadow color. I don't know why, but I'm just really drawn to them. So I think this is a really pretty palette. And definitely, as I open it here and now, I feel more inspired to use it again. So... And next up, this is the Cara Beauty, um, this is the Make a Statement palette, this is their issue 3, it's these like palettes that they use to look like magazine covers, and then the inside of it looks like this. Now, as you guys can probably already tell, I'm sorry to keep bouncing this thing back and forth, um, the bronzer and the highlighter are definitely too deep for me, which is totally fine, I don't mind that at all, but there is one pressed glitter in here, so that kind of takes points away from me. But this whole double column here of greens and blues is what saves this palette in my mind. I think those are so pretty. They're so deep and impactful, so vibrant um, that I really enjoy using this palette. The reds and purples, I'm kind of like, eh, that's fine. But these two rows here, I mean, I would be okay even if all I had was that. Like, I would be completely fine because I think those two rows of shades are so pretty impactful. So that's why this one hit where it did. The next palette to talk about is the Pure and Raw Beauty Christie palette, which I did not originally pick up whenever it first came out, but then the more I saw people using it, the more I was like, dang it, now I want it. So I ended up finding this unused on Mercari, and I got it for, I think, a dollar or two more than the original purchase price, so not too bad. Um, so it's two-sided, of course. You have one side that's definitely more neutrals, and these neutrals are very pretty. I feel like you have some warm tones, some cool tones, and then this really pretty shimmer in the middle. And then the other side is all of your kind of like fun, bright colors, and again, a shimmer in the middle. I tend to use this as a companion palette to some of my other like more shimmery palettes, like the Essence palette, the It's Bell palette, so this makes a great set of mattes for me. So I think because it's not a complete look in one palette is why it ranks a little bit lower for me, but I do think it's a really pretty quality, and I've really enjoyed all the eye looks that I've done with this one. The next one to talk about is the C Color Purple Rain palette, and this is supposed to be a dupe of the Jeffree Star, I don't know, something palette. Um, and I do really think this is a pretty color story. Again, you've got this kind of periwinkle blue. I was like all about the periwinkle blues the first half of this year. So I picked up a lot of palettes that had that. Um, and I do think the other shades in here are very pretty as well. These metallics are kind of like a soft metallic again. This one as well, very soft metallic. Um, but some of these other shades, a little bit more impactful. I do like the inclusion of this kind of like teal shade here. I'm sure the formula of this is very different from the Jeffree Star formula, but buying this one instead I can sleep at night so um, I went ahead with this one and I do really enjoy it. The next one up is the Colourpop High Tide. When I was making this list originally I was kind of trying to like eyeball where things were going to end up and I really thought this was going to be like close to my top 10 and it didn't even break my top 30 so I was really shocked about that um, but when I compare it to other things like I just I want to use those other things more and I think the reason why this dropped so low is because it's very monochromatic. It's stunning monochromatic though. This kind of like blackened eggplant purple to teal shade is probably one of the prettiest ColourPop shades they've ever made. Um, I do think this whole palette is very pretty, but you definitely have some colors that are sort of redundant. I love the packaging. I think it's really cute. The like little aquatic, uh, what do they call these? Sand, not sand dollars. Sea anemones? I don't remember. But anyway, it's a cute packaging. Um, for me, it ranks lower because it's smaller, it's more monochromatic. There are other things that I just am drawn to more, but it is a really high quality palette. I do have a video up on my channel with this one if you're interested in um, checking out how you can make this one really pop. It's a nice one. The next one up is the BH Cosmetics and Blueberry Muffin palette. This was one of the first palettes that I picked up from BH Cosmetics after Angelica and Ephes was like, oh my god, BH Cosmetics, they're the best. So I went and got this one to try out, and I do really like this palette. Again, you've got kind of this like periwinkle purple shade here, same here, and then you've got these really pretty like almost berry toned browns that work really nicely. I love this craving shade. It's got the 
faintest like ballet slipper pink kind of hue to it but it's mostly a silver I think that looks so pretty with these other shades here I love this stud muffin like navy shade here very very pretty color story I've been in love with the looks that I've done with this palette um, it does have a lot of similarity though to the passion in Paris palette so if you were thinking about getting both of them you probably don't need both you could probably pick whichever one you, you know you're drawn to a little bit more but pretty and then the next one to talk about is the Odin's Eye Word palette. And this one came out with the Norns collection. It's one of the small, like, five slash six pan palettes that they did. I like this color story a lot. This shade, though, does not show up on me at all. So that's kind of a minus. I love how this one has this almost, like, red-orange, like, mango-y shift to it in the iridescent shade. It's so pretty. And, like... I'm not even sure you're going to be able to see it there. It just looks so pretty whenever you use it, especially in combination with this shade here. This metallic green looks just like this on your eyes, and it's so dark and smoky and grungy. I love it so much. Because it's a smaller palette, it definitely ranked a little lower for that reason. But if I had, like, a whole palette, like, one of their, what is it, 16 pan palettes with shades like that in it, oh my god, I'd just throw all my other eyeshadow away. Number... 30. This is the Glam Shop W. Moro palette, which is this really cool kind of army khaki green palette. I was really inspired by the KKW khaki palette, but that palette had so much brown in it that it really was like turning me off. But I was like really in the mood for something very similar to that with more greens. And I stumbled across this one, and this is actually how I found Glam Shop in the first place, was this palette. You have these two, three shades here, which are like pressed flakies, although these two shades are bigger flakes than this one you have two metallics here and then four mattes I think the mattes that they chose run a perfect range from light to deep and it's all that kind of like khaki green brown army type color these look so pretty and vibrant on the lid very very beautiful now her palettes because she is based out of Poland are a bit expensive to ship so I would say if you're gonna order something I would maybe watch a couple review videos pick out a couple of things that you want and save on the shipping because otherwise you're gonna pay shipping after shipping after shipping it just gets old quick the next one is a palette that's actually no longer um, available this is the nomad and Shanghai palette and I put this one up here because I do think it's a really pretty palette now if you were interested in picking up those shades that should look pretty familiar because I think these are the same shades as the home for the holidays limited edition palette that they're doing this year so if you were looking for that maybe consider picking that up um, but you'd be missing out on the mattes for me, not a big deal. I, I think this palette is really pretty though. Nomad has such a special formula and the owners have always been, you know, so kind and and sweet to me. So I really have enjoyed the brand a lot. They're one of my favorite indie brands. So I was so excited. I'm glad I picked this up when I did because it got discontinued shortly thereafter. But I think it's a nice quality palette. And when I think about using it, I do get very inspired by the color story. So controversy aside, I do think it's a very pretty palette next one to talk about this is the NYX to me love me palette and this is one of their Valentine's Day releases I just unroll this 16 foot long string that they hold the palette together with it looks like this now this one is definitely like that pinky purple color story it's definitely more cool toned the metallics in here even though they're not like 100% foiled they're so soft and buttery which I love and I do think they have a good amount of pigment so for me personally I really enjoy using this palette I think at this point I would probably add like something sparkly on top like a you know super shock ultra glitter or something like that just to give extra dimension but I do think this palette is really pretty even on its own Next one to talk about, this is the ColourPop a Limoncello palette, and I think this is probably my husband's favorite palette of the year because he really likes the looks that I've done with this palette because they're very soft and neutral, um, but I do think, you know, there's some really interesting shades in here. You have these really beautiful, um, like, lemon and sort of limey green shades here. You've got some really pretty, like, duochrome type metallic shades here. All these mattes blend so beautifully together, and I love the inclusion of the blue. I think that looks so, so nice. So for me, the packaging is 10 out of 10. I'm obsessed with this kind of packaging. I love the color story, so this one ranked pretty high for me this year. 
And then the next one, this is the third out of the Pinky Rose Trilogy. This is the Exotic Peacock. This is the one that I was the most excited about when I was picking up that collection. And it's because it's like a green-blue-purple color story. Those are definitely my jam. Um, I think these are really, really pretty. You've got a lot of like really interesting shades here and tones, things that I don't think you see in every single palette. Um, I do like that they included this kind of like kind of like soft bone highlight shade. I think that's a really nice inclusion and I love this kind of bright blue here. You've got a bright green in here so you can make things really vibrant or you can make them more grungy. I really think this is quite a nice palette so that's why I ranked so high. The next one to talk about this is the Genesis palette from Midas and Drenched Cosmetics. What a great collaboration this was. This this palette was basically celebrating like all of the wonderful beautiful things there are about being African American and I think that is such a cool concept. I love the art that they did, like the style of the palette that they did for this is so pretty. Um, and you do get a nice big mirror in here and then this is your color story. This shade right here is the shade that I wanted this palette for and I know that's ridiculous because you don't buy a palette for one shade. But Midas Cosmetics had a 50% off sale and you could stack a like influencer code and get free shipping. So I was like don't mind if I do and I went ahead and picked this palette up I think this palette is worth every penny it's such a beautiful beautiful color story this matte is so vibrant this blue is such a beautiful navy blue it looks so pretty all over the lid like excellent even the even the uh, the neutrals in this palette I really like I think they picked such beautiful tones and such beautiful depths I'm totally okay with there not being anything that's like a brow bone or like a bone shade I'm cool with that in this palette because I don't number one I don't think it's necessary nor does it fit with the theming um, but number two I have that about 150 times over in my other palettes so this is a really really pretty palette if you decide to get it I don't think you'll be disappointed the next one, this is the Sydney Grace and Temptalia on the Horizon palette, and this one is in the light format, and it looks like this. Now, the thing that really drew me in and got me excited about this palette was like this quad over here. I really love the kind of like navy blue, the metallic kind of denim blue, this sort of minty green, and then the silver I thought that whole quad looked so pretty and then I did really like these kind of like purpley shades these more bronzy copper shades I could kind of take or leave but the rest of the palette was really pretty to me and I really enjoyed playing with this one a lot Sydney Grace's formula is a banger if you've never tried it so I think their website doesn't do justice to how pretty their shades are but definitely definitely a great palette and then the next one to talk about is the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. So I actually, my aunt picked this one up for us to try because we were both commenting about how pretty we thought it was. And she's like, well, we're about to know for sure and picked it up for us. So thank you so much to her um, for picking this up for me. But I really like this formula. I've heard some comparisons between this one and the um, more Eternal collection from Melt, which is cool because I definitely missed out on that collection, but I think this is a really pretty color story. I love that you have sort of these minty blues and then more like earthy greens in here. You've got some reds, and I love that they just skip they skipped having like a full warm tone neutral palette because I think for a wilderness palette you could have easily gone that route and it just would not have been for me. So I think this is a really pretty color story. I love the metallics that they chose. Beauty Bay formula is banging so um, that one ranked pretty high for that reason. The next one to talk about is the Alien Cosmetics Strawberry Milkshake palette which looks like this. Such a cute little color story. I love the packaging on it too. It's really interesting. Um, this is the actual color story inside. I think this shade was kind of unnecessary and I think the shade while it's pretty it just doesn't have like tons of color payoff. I mean you get some but I wish it had just a little bit more of that like purple intensity to it. These shades and this one are so nice and vibrant so I think that's why I'm kind of slighted by that one. The mattes in here are very pretty. I love the little strawberry embossing in here. This is a beautiful palette and I really enjoyed the looks that I made with that one. And then probably one of my most recent additions to this list is the Lethal is Dead, um, Lethal and Teresa is Dead collab. I think this is such a pretty palette. When I first saw it I was like, yeah, you don't really need it because you already have shades like this. And so I passed on it and then when Teresa made an announcement that they were going to be like officially retiring the palette, I was like, oh no, I need it. <laughs> 
so I went ahead and ordered it. I do really like these shades. I think I do have something pretty similar to these two in my collection already, but I think this kind of lilac -y shade is very pretty. This sort of bronzy yellow shade is so pretty. Bronze? No. Iridescent yellow shade I think is very pretty. These other mattes in here blend so nicely. I've really enjoyed the looks that I've done with this one. I did this kind of like mermaidy look on Friday with this palette, and I was really blown away at how nicely that look came out. Everything blended together so nicely. Um, Lethal's formula is phenomenal. Like, that's a brand that if you have a color story you're interested in, I don't think you're going to be disappointed because the colors are so nice. So, it ranked up pretty high for that reason. The next one to talk about is ColourPop or Kid You Not, and mine, the mirror fell out, I still haven't glued it back in, we're just going to skip over that part, but this is what it looks like. I love this palette, I think the packaging is really pretty, number one. Number two, I think they did a good job picking out these shades, I love this like really grungy raspberry shade here, the mattes go so deep and dark, which I really appreciate. Um, I love that they didn't waste time doing a lot of like really lighter pastel shades in here, Skip that all together, give me the depth. I really appreciate that. And then you have this one really pretty, like, brightening color. So for me, this is a really cohesive color story. For being a nine pan, I'm pretty impressed. And it made it up pretty high in my collection. So this is number 19. This is the Beauty Bay Age of Opulence palette. And this one, same thing. You have these really beautiful, deep, jewel-toned mattes, which I really, really love. These are so vibrant. I love this really grungy, like darkened color there. The only thing that I'm not as in love with is the fact that so many of the metallics in this palette are neutrals, and you do have like a good amount of neutrals in here too. So it's kind of like half neutral, half colorful, but they've kind of balanced it out a little bit by alternating between which ones they're putting in there. And I think the neutrals are pretty. Like this is one of those pinky gold duochromes. Of course, I'm going to think that's pretty, um, but I wish they would have put more like jewel toned metallics in here than just these two but they are very pretty so great formula I love the color story so it ranked number 19. Number 18 is the Odin's Eye Norns eyeshadow palette which looks like this and again you have that really pretty packaging which is then carried through on the actual inner packaging which I think is really cool but when you open it up it looks like this. No press glitters, which I think is awesome. And you have this whole row of really vibrant shimmers. This purple to like a teal green blue duochrome is probably one of my favorite shades in the whole collection because I think it is such a beautiful shade. This is actually a multi-chrome, which I didn't know for the longest time. I thought it was just an iridescent pink duochrome, and it's not. It's a multi-chrome. And depending on the lighting, you can see like green, you can see orange, you can see pink, you can see yellow. Super pretty. So that makes a great inner corner highlight, brow bone highlight. You've got this really pretty olive shade. And then I want to draw your attention to this shade too. This is like a silver shade, but it has a lot of like gold glittery kind of product put into it. Not a pressed glitter. But it definitely has this like silver and gold mixed together kind of a vibe. And I love that Odin's Eye plays with their textures so much like that, plays with their colors like that. Because normally you would not see silver and gold put together. But I think when that happens, it's a really special shade. I only have one other shade in my collection that's very similar to that. So the JD Glow shadow that I have that like is like that is called Fairy Acid. Again, a really, really beautiful shade. So definitely I love the textures. I love the variations in the color and the playfulness of that palette. Next up is the Michaela and Glam Light palette. Now when I got this originally I thought this was going to be water and I get that it's like why it's not but I wish it was because that would have been so cool to have like a snow globe effect in the front of the palette. <laughs> but the actual palette itself is like this and this palette is so pretty. These two shades here are probably two of my favorite shades in the palette on top of these two shades. This one is so like grungy and earthy. I love it. I don't really care too much about the neutrals in the top half of the palette but the like green blue purple of down here really gets to me. The reason why it's ranking a little bit lower because I love Glen Light's formula. The reason why it ranks so much lower is because of how big it is. I don't tend to reach for these like really really big palettes so this one ranked a little lower because of that. Now the next palette up is the Wine and Only palette and it looks like this. Again such a beautiful color story. I love all the like red burgundy tones. This shade down here is so pretty all over the lid. It just gives this really nice like light reflection um, I really enjoy using this palette, definitely will keep using it, and I love the theming of course, so it's a perfect one for me. This one was a surprise because I didn't think any neutral palettes were going to make it almost to my top 10, and this one made it to 
number 15 like that's shocking but this is the Lorac Pro Noir palette and it looks like this again it's got the stupid names on a paper thing here which I get why they do that because these can technically be popped out but I think that's so annoying but I really like this palette I think they did a really nice job of picking out some cool mattes and I love that they did twice as many metallics as mattes I think that's a great ratio for them these like silvery, taupey, copper, and purple type shades over here, I really like. I think they're very, very pretty. I love this super bright white here. And then you do have some pretty like more sandy neutrals, but I think for me, this and these like six over here are the most impactful, the most like interesting. And every time I do a look with this one, it comes out so smoky and beautiful. Oh, I just love it. So that one was a great palette for me. Nabla Cutie Midnight Palette, and it looks like this beautiful little six pan palette again I got this in the tribe box the not tribe box the trend mood box they did like a little collection there this blue is one of the most vibrant like sapphire blues I have in my collection so so pretty I love this sort of duochrome blue to sort of like a brown auburn base um, we've got this really pretty iridescent blue shade and then I love that they included this one kind of neutral bronze to sort of tie everything else together otherwise I think it would be too monochrome um, but I think this is a really pretty color story. I've definitely used this several times and really enjoyed the looks that I've come up with. So that's a good one. Much higher than the Huda Beauty Light Palette was the Huda Beauty Nude Rich Palette, which looks like this. Again, I think the mattes in this one, because I like something more vibrant than what Huda typically puts out, when she makes this rich one, it looks so nice on my lighter skin. I love how deep these shades go, and I love these kind of like burgundy type shades here. I'm not as hyper for this one. Um, it's not a bad quality, it's just a color thing for me. I don't really care about these like warm toned coppery shades, but the rest of the palette really looks so so pretty on. So for me, this one's a winner. One up to talk about is the BH Paris palette, this the uh, Passion in Paris palette. Now I talked about this one with the blueberry muffin and basically reminded you that if you have one you don't really need the other because they are very similar. But this one I feel like is a little bit more than a monochromatic palette. That one was very monochromatic blue. This one you've got some blues, you've got some reds, you've got some sort of purpley nude shades. So, you know, you have a better mix of colors here if you're looking for something with a bit, bit more variety. I think this kind of blackened gray here is so pretty on the lids. Again, this blue is as well. These reds look really pretty, especially smoked out on the lower lash line in contrast to all of these shades up here. And you do have two sort of transition-y shades if you're um, somebody who worries about that. The Louvre shade here is a really pretty kind of like iridescent sparkly white shade that I think looks beautiful as an inner corner or brow bone highlight. And I think they did a good job kind of capturing that sort of like romantic, cool toned Parisian kind of color story. So this one made it up pretty high for that reason last palette in this particular collection this is coming in at number 11 this is the Odin's Eye and Annette's Makeup Corner Giant Wolves collection or palette this is such a beautiful color story I love how grungy and dark it is I love these beautiful shades this shade here Eternal is this beautiful multi it goes from blue to sort of or I'm sorry like a pinky shade to sort of a blue shade very very pretty I love this olive shade you've got this kind of iridescent white with like a gold included in it very very beautiful i think the color story here is gorgeous i love how smoky and wintry it is so this made it up super high because it's a great formula it's a great color story it's a nice compact size i have no complaints about this palette all right let's go get the top 10. we are on to the last 10 we are almost there <laughs> so coming in at number 10 is the huda beauty rose quartz palette the reason this is coming in at 10 instead of a little bit higher is because it's newer in my collection so I didn't feel like putting it you know all the way to the top but I do think this color story is so pretty it's definitely that like pinky mauvey type color story that I really appreciate so I really love this one the only shade I'm not super in love with is this love stone shade which is that weird like Vaseline shade I don't care about that as much um, but these shades have such beautiful iridescent flips to them I love this super smoky kind of blue purple type shade and I think you've got some really pretty even this one has like an iridescent pink to it I think you've got some really beautiful textures in here Huda Beauty is one of those brands like Odin's Eye that plays with textures so well and even though I think her little like um Vaseline shades that's not a texture I really want to play with but some of the other shades that she does are so beautiful that 
I can sort of overlook that one shade. So it comes in at number 10. Number 9 is the ABH Norvina Volume 5. When this got sneak peeked, I was lusting after the Menagerie, um, what did they call it? The Bat Palette, the one that was like real purple. And when I saw this, I was like, never mind about that palette. This one is stunning. And it looks like this. It's shocking how high up this made it because it does have a pressed glitter and it is a very big palette. But I still think it's really pretty. You've got some beautiful purples in here. You've got these sort of like rosewood neutrals in here, which I think are very pretty. You've got the inclusion of this really smoky kind of purple shade, which I really like. And then you've got a handful of pinks and browns just to kind of round things out. I think this is such a beautiful palette. This white shows up beautifully. I don't have any complaints about this palette other than the sheer size of it. If it were like half the size and half the price, I would be like, this would be my number one palette for sure. But it's a really pretty color story and I can't complain about the color story or the like formula, the impact, the payoff of those shades. Beautiful. This will be number eight. This is the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette. So. This one has some like really pretty packaging as well. I love this sort of acrylic casing for her packages, for her palettes. This has very similar vibes to Rose Quartz, but it does also give you these kind of pops here of like purples and blues and kind of this like silvery gray shade. I think those are really beautiful. The texture on those is so sparkly and so interesting. I really like using those shades whenever I dip into this palette. I do love that you've got some really nice depth here with these two shades. And I love this shade for the inner corner and to just add some sparkle throughout my whole look. This palette has been definitely a favorite throughout the year, so it ranks at number eight. Coming in at number seven is another collaboration palette. And this is the Sydney Grace and Temptalia Quintessence palette. And this one is also in light. And I picked this one up in light because I wanted these two shades to be this like smoky kind of combination here. It kind of reminded me of like Natasha Denona Glam palette. So I really wanted to have that um, to be able to do that. I love this shade. It's like a pink to blue dual chrome with lots of silver shimmer in it. You've got this really vibrant red here. You've got these beautiful blues. I haven't played as much with the greens, but everything else in this palette really just does it for me. And when I think about playing with this palette or using this palette to make a look, I get really like excited, enthusiastic about that. So for me, this was like a really, really beautiful color story. And that's why it made it so far up to the top. On top of which, the formula is amazing this formula. I don't know why I haven't tried Sydney Grace before this, but getting these three palettes was the first time I tried them. The next palette to talk about is also a collab. I had a fair amount of collabs make it up to the to the tippy top here. So one, two, three, four, five. So this is number six. This is the Butte Bean and Shroud Cosmetics It's Freaking Fats collab. And this one I waited about six months to get, but it was worth the wait. This is a beautiful color story. I love this really like smoky teal. I love the dark eggplant here. This purple to sort of like a teal green called Zero, so pretty. I think this shade, because it has a bit of green in the like taupey silver of it, gives you such an interesting um, perspective. When I open this up, I get so excited to play with it. In fact, I might play with it tomorrow. This is such a beautiful palette. I really, I just love the looks that I've put together with it. I do have a video on my channel with that palette, so if you're interested in checking it out, it is up there. You just have to search it. And coming in at number five is actually the Nabla Soul Blooming palette. So I was able to find this one online and got this one picked up, and I'm so excited to be able to have it in my collection. Compared to the W7 dupe, this one definitely has more interesting shimmers. The shimmers have a better texture. They're very soft and buttery like Nabla shimmers always are. And this one just has, instead of just being like a white to gold, it definitely almost pulls a little bit more into this like orangey copper kind of a flair to it as well, which I think is really pretty. I love this navy blue. I think this shade is kind kind of like a soft ballet slipper pink to a blue dual chrome. Very, very pretty. And the browns and the pinks in here just complement those blues so nicely. I was very hesitant to pick this one up, but now that I have it, I'm so happy I have it because I think it's one of my favorite palettes and it made it so high up in my collection this year that, you know, I can't argue with, with how much I've really enjoyed that one. Number four is another Huda Beauty palette, and this is the Huda Wild Jaguar palette. And I wasn't sure if I should expect to like this one a whole lot or not, but I really, really like this palette. I feel so inspired when I open it. I love this like silver to purple um, dual chrome shade here. I love these kind of like grungy metallics that they have in here. The mattes that they selected, 
I think are just really nice. And then I like this, even this kind of like frosty purple color. The whole palette together is very, very pretty. It's very small, so easy for like travel. You could even take it in like a bag that you go back and forth to work with. Um, the price, you know, it's $29, so it's cheaper than her bigger palettes, which I think is awesome. I really like this formula. I would be tempted to pick up the other palettes that were like this one, especially the um, like the tropical looking one that's like greens and blues and stuff. That one I think would also be very good quality based on how much I like this one. Coming in at number three, this is the last like true collab palette that I have to show you, and that is the Angelica Nephis and Kaleidos Club Nebula palette. So I love this palette a lot. I didn't actually do a video with this palette because I did a video duping the vibes of this palette in my current collection, things that were similar to this, so that if you weren't planning to buy this or if you couldn't get your hands on it, that video still exists that you could, you know look for alternatives because I found a lot of alternatives for each of these shades but I do think the actual palette itself is very pretty I think the metallics that they chose for this are beautiful metallics and the mattes that are in here complement them so nicely so for me this is definitely like a banger of a palette like it's so right up my alley um, but if you weren't able to get your hands on it or you didn't want it and now you do definitely check out my video because it talks a lot about some other alternative shades that you know you can do about the individual shades that you're the most interested in my number two palette of the year goes to the Natasha Denona Midi Retro Palette. And this beauty will set you back $65, I think. But it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. This palette has some really beautiful shades. I love... Okay, let's talk about this shade first. This shade makes a great topper. It makes a great inner corner highlight. It makes a great like lower inner third kind of like pop accent there. This is another one of those pinky gold dough chrome, so of course we know I love it. I think the mattes that she chose out in here are very pretty, and a lot of them are the cream to powder mattes, which I actually think for this palette works really nicely together. I think the colors blend so well together, and you can get something that's more of like an antique kind of shade, like eye look, or you can get something that's definitely more like pinky. So I really love this. This is like right up my alley. I think if this had released before Natasha Denona Love, I probably would not own that palette because I think this one is so much more workable for me in terms of like me knowing exactly what I want to do when I open up the palette. So that's why I made it all the way to number two. And then my number one palette of 2021. Okay, I cheated. <laughs> this is a collab palette that I put together of singles, um, but it is representing the Amy Loves Beauty and Amy Hearts makeup Amy Loves Makeup, Amy Hearts Beauty, whatever. It's the Alma palette collab that has since been removed from the internets, and I attempted to order it. I actually had it an order placed, and it didn't come for like three months, and I had to contest it with PayPal against um, the, the makeup brand, the Amy Hearts Beauty um, makeup brand, to get my money back because I never got my product, which was very frustrating. So I was like scheming for a way to figure out how to get a palette that looked like it and I put together some shades from Cleona, from Terra Moon, from Give Me Glow and I made this palette and of all of my palettes that I've had this entire year this is the one I've dipped into the most and this is the one that I feel the most inspired by whenever I look at it. This cool toned kind of grapey blue purple color story pops of pink I'm obsessed. So of every single palette that I've used this year, I think this one is my absolute favorite. I know whenever I did my ranking for the month that I made this, it was at the top of my list, like easy, no question, because of how much I really like this color story. So no, it's not a palette, but it kind of is a palette. Um, and it's definitely like a big favorite for me. If you'd be interested in knowing what the shades are, if you have specific questions about the shades, let me know and I can um, let you know what shades they are. But they're all from Give Me Glow, Cleona, Terra Moon, and I think there's one Makeup Geek shade in here, which was that one right there. So. Oh my gosh, you guys, we made it. I really wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it through ranking all those palettes. That was a ridiculous effort. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. Let me know down in the comment below what were your top three or top five or top ten or top 85 palettes for the year. I would really love to know. Um, I want to thank you guys again so much for watching and for all the support that you guys have given me throughout the entire year. I can't wait to see what the next year brings for us. And I am going to see you very soon.